Abuse on the friend zone. Mom trying to beat, I'm trying to reach the end zone. You think I'm kind of sweet and you want to be friends though? It's cool though. Just don't try to play me for no fool, yo. Views from the friend zone. Mom trying to beat, I'm trying to reach the end zone. You think I'm kind of sweet and you want to be friends though? It's cool though. Just don't try to play me for no fool, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your boy Real Talk More from the Views from the Friend Zone podcast. You know, we back at it again. Much love. Today's a beautiful Sunday. The weather's kind of nice. We got a special guest in the building, you know. Feeling good. I went to church. You know what I'm saying? I got good energy from church. Fat. And the crazy thing about it is this was a very um, a open church. So it was just like people from all walks of backgrounds. It was, you know, gay couples in there, interracial couples. You know, they had... Uh, gay pastors and it was it was crazy um because i never been to a church like that but the beautiful thing about it it was mad love and i was just like wow that's interesting that you know you come to a place where there's so many people that might feel shunned but it was just mad love and energy so i'm trying to keep that energy going you know what i'm saying as always i'm gonna have my people introduce themselves it's your boy cliff brock Bonham. then our special guest what's going on it's steven st pierre actor comedian queens all day that's what's up. And also a fellow Zoe. <coughs> yes, sir. Sakpase. Uh, Sakpase. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We got the yeah. Zoes in the building. If they ain't know from the last name, St. Pierre. I mean, it's pretty obvious. You know, you know there's some St. Pierre's from like, you know, Trinidad. And, you know, you'll find a lot of like Toussaint and a lot of mm-hmm. Haitian names. Yeah, that's yeah, also yeah. from the other islands yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes you got to let them know. You know what I'm saying? All right. You know, tell us a little about yourself before we jump into the show. Um, well, you know, y'all my people's from Queens, so, you know, grew up in Queens. Yeah. My boy Cliff and Mom's ball days here. And yeah, shit. yeah, ball yeah. days, basketball days, <laughs> took us everywhere. Yeah. So, you know, pretty much grew up in Queens, went through, um, you know, high school, college, um, you know, not really knowing what I was going to do in life and stuff like that. But the last, like, five years, the path of my life took me to acting. Nice. So, for the last four years or so, I've been an actor, comedian, mm. and, you know, just kind of like, just grinding and doing my thing here in New York, you know what I mean? Have you have you been doing any stand up like open mics and stuff? Yeah, I started off. I started off taking like a beginner act. I mean, bare bones beginner acting class because I didn't know what. Can we curse on this? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Like, yeah. I, like I had no idea what the the acting was about. So I took like a beginner class, mm-hmm. and in that class, my acting teacher, you know, as I'm learning the craft of acting, he was like, you know, you're pretty funny. You have like good timing, yeah. like comedic timing. Mm-hmm. You should do take improv. Okay. Yeah. I had no idea what, I didn't even know there was like schools for improv. Like mm-hmm. I had, you know what I mean? So I went to improv class and in an improv class, some girls like, yo, you're pretty funny. You should like do stand up, like, cause you tell like good stories and that would help in stand up. Mm-hmm. So like in 2014, I was doing stand up. That's where I started. Sure. I was like doing stand up for like a good like year, just like, you know, Greenwich Village, uh, Comedy Club, New York Comedy Club, Rory Comedy Club. Like, I was out there just doing stand up, doing it, doing it. But man, that shit is a grind. Yeah, I can imagine. You gotta be out there every night just grinding, no money. You know, they got things where it's like different clubs where you got to actually bring people just to perform. So it was like, wow, like, you know, crazy. a lot of politics stuff. And, yeah. you know, so like, I was like, that ain't for me. Let me just stick to the acting and yeah. I could live my comedy through my acting, like with, with like videos or, or whatever short films I do. And I do a lot of sketch comedy now. So that's okay. how I kind of live with the comedies through sketch. Okay. okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So, you know, we're going to jump right into the show. And um, the first topic we're going to talk about is taboos in our community. Because I, I notice how, like, certain things that are acceptable in other communities, we kind of shun. Anything from, like, you know, fetishes to just, like, how we how we view sex, how we view, you know, sexual partners. Like, I heard a conversation, like, with two young Caucasian girls, and she was just like, you know, oh, man, I met him at the bar, and, and you know, an hour later we were sleeping together, and I rocked his world. Crazy. And, but the thing about it was her homegirl was like, oh, you're such a wild girl. But it was love. It wasn't like mm, a judgment mm-hmm, kind of thing mm-hmm. and stuff like that. It was kind of cool. Yeah. And then she was saying like, yeah, and then, you know, we've been, <coughs> dating, we've been dating now for like eight months, and we're going to get married. And it's just like, wow. It's been popped and, off and, and from the just community, that thing. In our community, like, yo. She's a you, hoe. You pull somebody from the club, she pop, you might. Pop a couple of more times, and that's but it. that's not going to yeah. be your future yeah. fiance. Yeah, I want my saying? wife getting down like that is basically what you're thinking. Yeah, exactly. So it's just like I, I wanted to just discuss the taboos on like how we view things so differently and like why we're so kind of like uptight about certain things. So the, 
question is taboos in our community. The sub question is when it comes to sex, why do people of our color have more hookups than others? Like fetishes, body count, time it takes to sleep with someone. You have our guests. <laughs> that's a tough question. You know? <laughs> that's a real tough because I, I don't think there's no like definitive answer. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of speculation. Maybe like just how love is viewed in our community where it's not always something that's talked about. You know, like you growing up in your house as a kid, you're not told you lo I love you a lot. Mm -hmm. You're not hugged enough for yeah. stuff like that. So growing up, you don't put that much value into the actual connection, emotional connection. It's about just physical stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, with your friends, like, yo, I'm fucking. You're like 13, niggas talking about you fucking already. And you're like, yo, I never <laughs> had sex yet. So now that's all you think about yeah, is, yo, yeah. I got to have sex. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. that, that's the thing that makes me cool. That's what, like, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I think that could be one thing, but I'm sure there's many things. You know what I mean? Because... Yeah. Yeah, no, you want to answer that? No, you go first. No, because to me it's just like, I think we don't vibe enough with our energy. We're, we're always, like we always have to carry everything with rules and stuff like yeah. that. Like you meet someone, y'all connected, and she's like, all right, I might give him buns in two weeks, but I'm mm -hmm. not going to give him head yet. Yeah, I yeah. might wait a couple of weeks to give him head so he don't think I'm too much of a freak. Yeah. And meanwhile, I was just like, oh, man, she didn't give me head. That means she whack. And it's like, we don't flow Just enough. let it go. You know yeah, go with the it's moment. so much worrying about you know, meeting these certain standards, even fetishes, like you'll see, you'll, you'll hear someone saying how like, you know, their fetish is to do, you know, some dudes will be like, oh, their fetish is to, uh, you know, have their woman use a sex toy on them and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And then you'll find people from other cultures talk about it like openly, freely. Yeah, yeah. Openly, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then They're sharing like, advice, like, yo, you should try this. It's just like any, and it seems like any time a dude do anything, you know, that's, that's, on the freaky side, oh, he's closet. He's a download mm. person and stuff like that. Oh, he's this and that. And then we, we apply so much pressure upon ourselves when it comes to that, that, you know, we can't have open, candid conversations. It's the judgment. And, and that's why we're afraid of be being judged. With you, I think that's the reason why we have so much download activity because people in our community can't live as themselves. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Because so they got to sneak around and do stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I think the stereotype of, 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 of how situations plays out, right? Like, if if you if you can go to the club and you fuck shorty on the first date, whatever, automatically you like, and you tell your man that you're like, damn son, that was a nice little pop you got, not knowing that you had feelings for it, you won't tell mm -hmm, him, yo, bro, mm -hmm. I really like this yeah. one, like, yo, this, this wasn't just a fuck, I, you know what I mean? I could see something with it because your man gonna look at you crazy. Like, yeah, like yo, yo you be in the first just, night. Like, we just met her a couple hours ago at the word. day party. That's a dub already. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and, and what's crazy so, about that, right? And the reason why I say the energy kind of thing because when you're younger, you think about the body count, you think mm -hmm. about how quick and stuff. Yeah, but it's just like yo. Sometimes you can meet someone and y'all vibe is just crazy. The connection is just yeah, that yeah, real. Yeah. It's, just crazy. it's organic. It's just like yo. I know I just met her, the way we looking at each other, the vibe, the conversations yeah. we're having, like, yo, not only am I feeling it for tonight, but I want to make sure this like, is something I, lock I it down. Yeah, 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 I, I might want to lock, lock it down. But the rule of thumb is just like, if you hear that he popped that night, she's a slut. She's a slut. She's a slut. She ain't she's mean fuck with So man. now her equity is... Meanwhile, yeah. we out here popping as soon as we can yeah. all the time. Right, right. So we pop, girls pop for they got poor body credit. Like they're like a like four or five hundred, you know, credit score. Exactly. Like, they're doing that early like that. Exactly. And, and 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 that's the crazy thing is just like, you know, why we why do we put that kind of pressure on ourselves and just not go with energy? I'm not sitting there saying we should go out sleep with as many people as yeah. we can and stuff like that, but you know, the energy, the vibe, the feel that you get. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I feel like People in our culture, we hide things so much that that's why we kind of like sleeping with strangers mm -hmm. or, 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 you know, we messing up relationships because we're going to people and be like, yo, this person didn't meet certain criteria. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, a stuff fact. Like that. and I talk about it a lot because, you know, uh, like I'm like the type of person, like people talk to me for like advice and stuff, like, mm -hmm. you know, especially like relationships, like stuff like me that. Too. Like I mm -hmm. talk to like, especially like my female friends, I'm always like trying to give them that's advice on too. stuff, you know what I mean? And I be telling them, like, listen, y'all be having this long list. Remember that Chili show when she had that, yeah. like, that list of shit? That like, shit was yeah, yeah the, it was crazy. It was, a joke. was like a, C, a CVS receipt. That shit was so long. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I be telling, like, yo, you need to have, like, three things you absolutely can't tolerate. That's fine. You can't. But, you know what I mean? Thing and everything else is good. Is those people who have these long lists. In their mind, they'd be so put together, but yeah. they'd be lonely as hell. That's they're not how, happy. How many people? They're not happy. Not That's happy the key. They're not, they're not happy they're with act, themselves. They're acting. They're very. They're, they're Academy That's Award the key. winners. Academy yep. Award winners. Right? It was happy. Oscars yeah. last week. They should have been happy. out there. How many girls you know with the long list, and then you ask them, "Oh, so how long you been in a relationship?" 
Well, I'm single right now. I'm trying to figure yeah. things out. I haven't so met I, the right I, one I knew yet. That, I knew that already. I only asked this. Yeah. Just yeah. It's not to say that you can't have lists. You're supposed to have standards. But it's just like we live off of these BS lists. We make mm-hmm. these certain things. And then it's just like, yo. Because at the end of the day, nobody's perfect. No. So exactly. you can't have a no. list looking for perfection. That's Even fact. the taboos of, of, of sex, right? So you'll find that um, you'll, you'll hear certain girls be like, yo. I don't do such and such or, you know, for instance, like, you know, I had a a conversation where I was with a a Caribbean girl and the dude and the dude was just like, yo, I don't mind if a, if a girl like, um, licks my gooch, you know, the gooch is the area. Yeah. The little, little pocket between, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then if she wants, she could toss my salad and the girl, she was a Caribbean girl. She was just like, oh, you're a homo. Oh, wow. And this is my thing. You know, I've never had it done, but I'm not going to hate on someone if they like it done. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And my thing about it is if you're closed minded with that kind of perspective, your dude you with, if he wants that done, he's going to go get that done somewhere else. Yeah. Because you're not making it comfortable. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like, you know, and then you always hear that, that double standard where it's just like, you know, oh, women, especially Caucasian women, you know, give aura with no problems. Mm-hmm. They're freaky and stuff like that. I just feel like they don't have the hangups and the inhibitions that we have yeah. where it's just like, you know, how, if a friend call her a slut, she's joking and having a good mm-hmm. time. It's mm-hmm. not really judging people and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. So, and another thing I feel is like, yo, in our community, we worry so much about what other people are doing in their bedroom. It's you know nobody's business for the so, most part. You yeah. know? Even 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 though we're all heterosexual males in in, in the um, studio, even when we're talking about sexuality and stuff like that, like as minority men, especially black men, you find out that someone's homosexual, and you get all uncomfortable, and people get riled up, especially mm-hmm. Caribbean men. And I'm just like, dude, they ain't got nothing to do with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So why they live are you their so, life, live yours. Why are you so wild up? Why, mm-hmm. why, yeah. why, why? why and, I don't know if it's insecurities. insecurities or something. I don't know yeah. if it's just like it's so shunned in the community, but it's just like, yo, like I've I've seen men get nervous and start sweating because a openly gay person comes within the vicinity or shares your space. I'm it's like, a lot dude, of, it's a lot of ignorance he's too. Not, it's you not like mean? he's gonna, he's gonna hit on you. He's gay. You're probably not his type. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, sometimes I think with that when you're talking about that part, I think sometimes it could be an insecurity of. They could be into that kind of stuff, and now they're nervous that 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 that's might in the be room. exposed. Yeah, yeah they, they might, might be get exposed. exposed to it, you know. But the, the reason, um, the question that you asked, society, the reason why we always have to portray certain things and have a list and all that, because we feel obligated to be accepted by certain things yeah. instead of just doing it. Like, if you if you meet a chick. I, I'm all, listen. We all in our thirties years, thirties now, right? Damn, if you man, meet a chick, listen. Shit, if you chill. listen, huh? Chill with that shit. Man. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm an actor, nigga. Okay. That's what my age. <laughs> <laughs> Some nah, people don't want to uh, talk about the age, so sorry about that. Nah, but man. if if you are older man now, what you call it? If you fuck the girl on the first day, or you fucked on so sixty days, it don't What's matter. Difference? Yeah. It don't What's matter difference? because if you fell in love, it doesn't. Well, why does it matter? You think because she's. You fucked on the first day she hoe. That connection might have just been that real. Yeah, and, and you know what I mean. But it. society says if you fuck on the first day, she's a pop. It doesn't matter. That, 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 that's kid. Even, that's even though yeah. who says she's not really feeling you, and exactly, that's what she wanted yeah, to do exactly. with you. Even even if you're a serial first date popper, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, as a man, yeah. Your resume is still solid. That's yeah. a fact. You don't yeah. gotta worry yeah. about yeah. anything like that. You I mean, it's a lot of double standards, thing. unfortunately, that yeah, you know women go through. It's like it's horrible sometimes. Yeah. So, you know, another taboo is the body count situation. Yeah. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like to me, body count when I was younger, when I was a kid, is just like, yo, if she got 50 to 100, oh, oh man, oh, she's this, that, you know. And, yo, people people accumulate bodies just like reaction. you accumulate bodies and stuff Fact. like that. Like, to me, I don't even worry about that stuff like that. You kind of want to know what kind of person is living their life because it affects you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Especially if y'all having unprotected sex. But body counts and stuff like that, like, you know, why are we so hung up on that? You know what I'm uh, I think it's about, like, how much people, you know, like you said, it goes back to, like, the insecurities. Yeah. A guy feeling like this woman had so many other men before him, so he feels like how much value could he have if this woman already had been with so much men? So he's feeling like he's devalued to her mm-hmm. because of that. I think that's why a lot of men feel a way about that whole body count stuff. How society looks at it, again, it's like we're saying, a woman should be pure and shouldn't be with so much men and things like that. So that's how they look at it. Like, you know what? 
this woman isn't like pure enough for me because she's been with too many men. Yeah. And that's how I look at you know, it's, just, me, it's not fair. I, I want, I, I got a sliding scale kind of thing. Like, you know, I definitely don't want someone who's been with like 10 people or less because I feel like then their mind Ex- is still experience curious. enough. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, I don't put a cap and stuff like that. You know, if if it comes out that you was with five hundred people, I kind of I kind of need to know yeah. why were you That's broken? You know five hundred though. I no, mean, damn. I think five hundred. Nah, five hundred is a lot, man. Listen, listen. Five hundred is a lot. Listen, I know y'all say that. That's right? hyperbole. You just listen, saying that. No, it's not the real number, I right? I know y'all. <laughs> five hundred is a crazy number. It was a, it was an exaggeration. I know y'all say that. I've I've known females who I'm. Just had a lot of numbers. Just they, like they, something they, crazy. Um, they hate for me to say females, right? Because females doesn't apply to so, humans. It could be a female. That's so true. So women, right? Yeah. I've known women who've had 200 body counts, and we were 20 when we were having this conversation. What? 20 when we were having this conversation. So now you got to think about damn. that. You don't so, want to tell your age, but I'm <laughs> in my 30s, right? Yeah. So it's been over 10 years since that woman has had. 200. So she gotta be up to 350, and that's what he's saying, right? It's like a track record. It's like, <laughs> it's like you're predicting the future <laughs> with your history. But to me, that doesn't necessarily diminish her value. You know what I'm saying? No, she, no. she kind of knows. The fuck. She knows kind of one. And when I said this, the sliding scale is just like you know, the 500 to a thousand is crazy. But you know what? I just need to know that you know what I'm saying like you know, that phase you're done with that phase. And you know what matters more than me, and I think it's gonna it it, it answers what you just said. The number necessarily doesn't matter to me. It's how you move. How you so move. I think that's what you're trying to say. Like, if that phase is over, how mm-hmm. she's moving lets you know yeah. that. Because you think about it, you hollering at a girl who got 500 and stuff like that. You know, guys are stalkers. So if yeah. you got 500, they got to be 50 who's still active, lingering around. Who's active. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> who, who always feel like they active. want access yeah, to you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And my thing about mm-hmm. it is that's a fact. I'm not... I'm not. It's not that I'm insecure. I'm just not willing to deal with a woman who's entertaining. Yeah, and that's okay. If that's what she's doing, 15, that's what she's doing. That's okay. Good 15, 20 now. I'm just like you know what you you. That's go you. But and that's not what I'm into. Yeah. I'm, I'm you, just, but when you deal with a woman, you go by like you go by her energy, right? You could know by you could know by our conversation what you're dealing with. Like yeah, all right. Saying it right here, like exactly. Because I could I could know in an hour conversation because I could know okay. She kind of mixy. She kind of still want to mm-hmm, be out there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If she's saying certain things to portray something, that's something that I'm going to do my research. But somebody who's dealing with uh, stuff like that, she's going to have a more spontaneous, fuck it, it is what it is kind of attitude. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to hear you're gonna hear that in that first hour that's of what conversation. I'm saying, yeah. so, you, so now it's your job to be like, yo, am I fucking her or I'm trying to get to know her mm-hmm. with a high body count? That's how I look yeah. at the body count. But the body count, a girl could tell you, yeah, yeah I've been with 50 dudes, you know what I'm saying? That was when I was young. I was playing the field. Yeah, 50 dudes, especially by the time you 30. 50 dudes is a lot. Still. It's still a lot. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> relatively, <laughs> relatively, <laughs> relatively, yeah. relatively Steve, speaking, I'm it's still a lot. No, 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 Steve. no, no, no. Steve, that's a lot. <laughs> let me, let me do, <laughs> relatively speaking, it's still a lot. <laughs> let me, let me, 50's a lot. 50's a lot. Let me, a lot. Let me do the math with you. But not negatively a lot. It's just a lot. Let me do the math with you. It just is. Yeah. Typically. It's too much, Marv. No, no. That's a lot. A girl starts, let's just say a girl started having sex at 16. Right? She's now 32. 50 is three bodies a year. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Let's do that math again. <laughs> 16 mm-hmm. to 32 at 16 years. Mm-hmm. Three a year. That's yeah. more than 50. No, that's 50. Yeah. That's less than 50. That's yeah, less than 50. Yeah, three a year? Yeah. Oh, wow. 32. Yeah. That's 48. That's 48. 48, yeah. yeah that's 48. And think about it. Three a year? That, 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 three that three a year for the last 16 years I mean, is nothing. No, 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 no. It is. You know why? Because why is it when you why, out why there, is it three listen, why is it three years? You listen, never been in a relationship. Relationship <laughs> should have ate up about a good three four years twice. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Twice over a listen, good relationship should have ate up three four years. Let's just say you was in a relationship for two years and you only had mm-hmm. one person. One person. And then now you back at it. So you went and caught up. You had six. And and then, <laughs> it's six months. When you you, gotta, you back you, at you it, it's six up? months. That's you could a lot. Five nah. easy. Five, nah, man. Yeah, fifty. Nah, I'm. I ain't gonna lie. Fifty's a lot, dog. For, for, for men or women, for it's men, just a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Fifty for a man is not a lot. I was trying to save. I was trying to save. Clint blew it up. Clint blew it up. I was trying to save us. Fifty for a man is not a lot. 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 Fifty for a man is not a lot.
Who's who's his fifty bodies? Dog, but women outnumber men what two to one? I think it is now almost three to one now. So dog, fifty's not a lot. if you went to four year college and you play college ball or whatever. Fifty's not a lot. Dang. That you can average about fourteen, fifteen a semester. Yeah. You see, so. especially especially you was a lefty. Especially you was a lefty. You were six two since you was twelve. Like Cliff, you fifteen a semester. You guys are further perpetuating the taboos that make it uncomfortable. You see, because you guys both said, wow, 50 is a lot. There's probably women who are going to listen to this like, yo, I have no, but, easy 100 bodies. But what, and that's why people start <laughs> lying. Nah, start see, but the thing shit. is, when you're saying 50 is a lot, I mean, nowadays it's not, I don't care. Like, to me, yeah, I guess that's I don't care. Question you but should it, ask, yeah, though. like, I think nowadays it's not as, ask, like, yeah, relevant as, as it has been but before. before it, it was. was yeah. But even when I say 50 is a lot, I'm not saying it, like, negatively. It's just like, it's just a high number. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? It's just a high number. So, so it's whether you with that or not. to this taboo, because you see, this is why we have an issue, because we hold up. <laughs> we're not sexually free. We're not, like, to me, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, if we had this attitude that we came into this conversation thinking that we're, you know, we're open-minded, and mm -hmm. then we start having these numbers, and we're like, yo, 50's crazy. <laughs> you know how many people walk around with 50 bodies easy? But, yeah, I passed so like four me, to the street right now. We're in Brooklyn. <laughs> So, so let me Shout ask out to Brooklyn. You this, let me ask you this one question before we move on. And my question is, so what are the no-nos if, like, okay, let's say you were single and you're approaching, you know, a woman, y'all having conversations, y'all vibing. What, what is a flag that you can hear that's just like, nah, I'm not going to be able to handle it? Just give me one flag. Just general. Or you saying like general. that she talks about nowadays? You got something, Cliff? Yeah, you can start it off. Okay. If you got something, go. I'm still thinking a little bit. Um, like, what is the flags of what she of certain things that you you wouldn't tolerate? Yeah, that's it's, it's not gonna go down. In terms of what building a relationship. <sighs> if if a chick tell me she's not willing to work, it's not gonna happen. Like just a, a job, uh, occupation. Not not work, not or, willing to work or have no financial goals to try to set herself up because mm -hmm. that means you're looking to eat off my plate. To plan. depend on so you solely. I don't, the problem is I don't care what job you have because I'm going to go get it. But that means if you're not ambitious to tell me that you're going to have a career, mm -hmm. it's nothing to talk about, mom. Because you're not going to come into my, my good salary mm -hmm. and cut it up, cut it up, cut it up, and then we don't work out. And then you, you was never gonna you was never gonna be financially stable. I like somebody who's financially stable. So if she's not talking about her finances or building a goal or having goals to mm -hmm. better herself, there's not a conversation to talk about. I'm in my thirties. I'm putting it out there. I can't fuck around like that. Yeah. So that's what it is. What about you? See, that's deep. That's deep. If I I'm gonna go to the other end. Okay. Where it's like a we just at the bar talking, we just met, like it's okay. just like we're off the jump. Mm -hmm. Before I even go any like a, a little pet peeve of mine is like talking bad about people. Okay. Mm -hmm. I feel I can't trust you. If like you, you or like you just met me and you talking about somebody mm -hmm. okay. badly okay. and negatively. To me, that means you don't have. If we just met and you doing that, you don't have substance within yourself. It, it, that's what I'm saying. You're okay. That's what I'm saying. That's like a on the surface kind of quick thing that would just turn me off right away mm -hmm. before even, I even get to the even, financial stuff. But that I would do. That's I agree with that too. With okay. Me, even though it's crazy because I don't have any children. To me, it's just like if you have more than two baby daddies, mm. it's, it's gonna be a no for me. That's tough. a good that's one. That's a no. You know, because to me, it's, it's just a like no. drama with it's the first no. baby daddy could have been yeah. younger. First or baby daddy yeah. always gonna be able to hit it. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> oh, that's a fact. Now you got two. Now I got two. I got now you got to worry about two. Yeah. The first one you can you can play a little football two. with, like you know what? <laughs> no. I know he only come on Sundays to come get kick her, get his kid. Now you got two. You got to worry about <laughs> Sunday, Tuesday, I'm, I'm, Thursday. I'm, I'm, I'm I can't fuck with. It's a no for me, dog. I might can understand. That was a good one. I might can understand two. That's tough, though, man. But once you got more than because I have friends, you got three. Now for you a little loosey goosey with the coochie, b. No, you know what I'm saying? Like two, three. Three, Listen, you're making you're making horrible life decisions. Yeah, yeah. Three. I know I know someone with two like I have close friends okay. that have two baby fathers and okay. I know the situation intimately. Yeah. Okay. So I look okay. at it like, okay, I understand. Mm -hmm. So just two just out of nowhere, like I would have to know the context. Yeah. Like but what happened? How is it? What like what you know what's going on? I don't like, know if I can handle it too, cause the, he could he coming Sunday, he coming to Sunday run, he doing a Tuesday run while I'm doing my double at work. Yeah. So what, then, so wait, 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 you're saying too, Cliff, you're saying one baby father, two kids, or one baby, two one, kids it gotta be and two one baby fathers. father, and if it's two kids, it gotta be the, the same, same baby father. father. I can't do a two baby father. <laughs> That's too many plugging going on when I'm not around. Because listen, once you got kids with somebody, you believe oh, that? Uh, That's a whole nother topic. You believe that? 
Like, like for real? Listen, all of a sudden, he's you behaving right. He's let put, me tell you. Let me tell extra you why. Child a little extra I, the reason why I slightly believe it, right? Because I've, I've, I've known women who weren't even rocking with their baby father anymore. And now the boom. blue. But wanted another kid. And boom. And let him go back and mm-hmm. smash to give him yeah. the Well, that's because so when the kids kid. can have the same but father. But Cliff is saying, though, that he's still getting it in. On a semi-regular basis, just off all GP. He, listen, all he needs to do is act right for two days in a row. He might be able to hit yeah. it. So you just pick up the kid two days in a row. He, that's <laughs> act right. That's you, maybe yeah. bought the kid's new clothes, new clothes. And then you threw some groceries in the like fridge. Like a Jordan Force came out and he got one, him the, listen, the first one day. One baby daddy, you might be like, all right. Damn. I know he only come on Sunday. From, now you got to worry about two, listen, two dudes coming two through. Two dudes yeah. coming through. Now I can't, I can't keep up with that schedule. Right. That's so I'm going to move on to another taboo. Drop the kids off yourself. Another taboo in our community right and this is a little more serious but we pay ties but we don't have life insurance just think about that i don't think you need to qualify even that first thing i just life insurance in general we but just, just you no, know but mean? just think about that right there's so many people around us in our communities and we had, I had this conversation with some earlier about how wealth how we don't transfer wealth as a black community and stuff like that like mm-hmm. We pay our tithes yeah. every Sunday, yeah. but we don't have life insurance. So our kids are screwed. Yeah. We die. Nothing. We leave bills for our Funeral kids. Funeral costs. Yeah. Our kids can't bury us. Yeah. Yeah. But every Sunday, we made sure we put our tithes in the basket. And I'm not, anti- don't get it twisted, I'm not anti-church. I'm just saying, mm-hmm. that's the kind of taboo. The mentality back, and stuff, back, yeah. Backwards mentality we have in mm-hmm. our community. So why do you think we pay our tithes, but we don't have life insurance? It's... It's really deep rooted. I don't know about the insurance part. The insurance part, I think, is the education. We're not being educated on life insurance. Like yeah, I never was sat down at a because an yeah. age enough to be get like, legitimate hey, legitimate life insurance for fifty dollars a month. Early too, you can have it but, for you know I mean yeah. a minute. And, and the thing about it is, a lot of people take pay more than two hundred, three hundred, five hundred dollars a month in tides. Yeah, easy. Some people drop fifty dollars in the basket every week. Some people drop a hundred dollars in the basket. Weekly. You know what? Yeah, I'm gonna answer that. I think because. That's certain standard where you're younger, your parents teach you to go to church, and then so now that's certain values that habit, values yeah. in the church. So you're like, okay, boom, I'm making, I'm making a little, I'm making a good decent living for myself. Let me pay my tithes. Let me make sure I do that. See, when it comes to life insurance, now you're talking about a lot of people don't even know about having a financial advisor to know that okay, that that could help you your finances better. So for life insurance. That's something like you said. You got to be educated Edu- on. Not, yeah. You and then you to show thanks to God. Yeah, but listen. But you're not. You're take not care yourself. The future for yourself. I Man. know, but but the whole life insurance thing. People never expect that they're gonna die or something's gonna happen. But you, yeah. people are paying tides, thinking that that's gonna make God happy. Open I don't the know, gates. But, yeah, but yeah, that, yeah. that's where it comes with not being educated. Was right. We're right? not. So. When you get to a certain age, you realize, oh, man, I ain't got life insurance. I need to do this. I need to mm-hmm. protect this. I, yeah. I, I don't want to sound like an atheist. I just feel like we put too much faith in that, you know. But that's deep rooted. Did you see? God did is going to take um, care of us one day or, you know, don't get it twisted. I believe in God heavenly. But I also feel like, yo, I got to be a man of mine and take care of mine while I'm here. Take care of my family, too, because at the end of the day. You know, you give, you throw this all this money to church, and then you know, you you see the pastor with a fly car, yeah. and like yo, I've been struggling with my Honda Accord that I've had since 2009. You know, what I'm saying I barely could pay my rent, but I pay my tithe straight. Mm-hmm. My pastor's looking good, mm-hmm. but I don't have a situation future for me and my kids. That don't make sense. Yeah. But that that's like he said. I think we're not like. Ties is something that if you, as a kid, like as kids, your parents kind of force you to go to church or try to get that religion in you. Day one. Get that religion in you. Life insurance is something you learn through a process of growing up, right? So as you get older, like you realize, oh, man, I need to have life insurance. God forbid something happen. Mm-hmm. Like I just had my daughter, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So now man. everything, you appreciate it. So now everything is like, oh, man, oh, I got to, yeah. like I literally base everything I do around her now because I'm like, listen. I got to make sure she's set at all times. Yeah. So ch- uh, church is something that your parents install in you a little bit in the household, whether you choose to follow it. That's all we had. Yeah, what you choose to follow it as Like as a black adult. people. And that's why I said it goes deep because like Nat yeah. Turner, remember how they used him to like preach to the slaves so that to they could keep, keep them in line? Keep them in mind. So that's what is deep rooted. That's like what we have is church like, is our like savior. It's traditional. It's, it's traditional, traditional. Yeah. 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 Like think about it. When have you been sat down and like, okay, uh, Marv's, 
you know, your dad or your mom be like, this is the mortgage. This is how much we pay every month. Yeah, yeah. This is how much interest you do. No. Even if you're not paying to do it, they're just letting you know this is what we're no, doing for the house. That's, that's grown folks' business. You're not allowed to know yeah, grown but folks' that, business. But at a point, you should be being told. Life insurance, insurance is grown, grown folks', folks business, business, too. Like you just yeah. said. But you should so, be taught at yeah. a time. So the church, the church aspect of paying tithes is, is something that you learn early because you go, early you're going to go to Sunday school. You see that plate mm -hmm. passed around a couple of times. So you know traditionally that's something you got to do growing up. So if the parents is not sharing the information of how they're paying bills and everything, which goes, you learn about life insurance around when you get older, maybe 18, 21, or you might be doing something. If you're lucky. If you're lucky. So to learn that early. Like in college. Let me, yeah. You know? Let me tell, if, if anybody who's ever listened to the show, listen to the show now, and I tell you that if you're in your 20s, your late 20s, early 30s, let me tell you, because people think that, you know, White people, people of other nationalities are just so much more lucky than we are, so mm -hmm. much more blessed yeah. we are. The number one transfer of wealth, the number one setup for future generations of wealth in this country, in this world, is life insurance yeah. policy. Yeah, it's a savings because not that you're just being not built. everybody's moms, you know, ran Microsoft and yeah, had a business have a, yeah, stuff yeah, to, to pass down an inheritance or something. Go out and find out for your age, 30 you don't got diabetes, Take out you don't a policy. got high blood pressure yep. you know, and stuff like that. Like, Take yo, out a policy listen, while you're healthy. Not even for how much you pop a bottle for in the club. I'm talking Crazy. about how much you would actually pay for this bottle. Yeah. The 50 bucks that you actually pay for this bottle, what it actually costs, not the 400 that it costs in the club. You can set yeah, up your If you're not paying family. for the girls in the sparkles in, <laughs> yeah. in the, the liquor store, that's why. Future, well, and, and to me, that bothers me. Like, Dr. Umar Johnson, he's a controversial figure, but he was he's telling a good, people, he's good, like, good guy. The church, we don't hold the church responsible for fixing our community or doing certain things mm -hmm. in our community. But who do we throw so much money to? The, the church. church. Yeah. And the church promised us a better life in the future while we suffer, while we still here. Yeah, yeah. I need to, I need to see some returns of what I'm doing right now while I still got while blood I'm in here, my right? body. Yeah. Yo. That's a, the no, whole Joel a, Austin thing where he didn't open the doors during the flood. You know what I'm that's saying? That's a fact. And they that's pay money to the church? I know. Honestly, that, that's, that's a great question. I never thought about it like that. But like I said. It's easy to to pay the tithes because traditionally that's how we spoke. That's how it's we set up. It's habit forming. It's man. like it's certain that. things. Like it's like we're taught to go to element elementary school, go to junior high school, go to high school, go to college. Mm -hmm. We're not taught to, you know, after high school, let's go to trade school so we can learn the business instead of start start right. Business. Oh, start your parents yeah. are always tell you continue your education, college, continue yeah, education, yeah. knowing that when I went to college, I played ball or whatever. But if I knew what I knew. I would have went to trade school and got the paper early. Yo, yeah, listen. Yeah. Or, you understand? Yep. It, it, that, but that's no, traditionally how it's set exactly, up. Exactly, yeah. There's, no hate, up. there's yeah. no hate in my blood, right? I got my master's degree. I work at one of the top, you know, uh, companies in the world and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But all my friends who didn't go to college started working for the MTA, working for Kanye. Re and retiring paper. next year. <laughs> 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 They're retiring listen, next year with a good listen, pension. Two, three more years. <laughs> they they go. They're CEOs, yeah, they're police yeah. officers, they make way more bank than I do <laughs> yeah, yeah. in this situation. And they get to retire earlier. And I'm not saying education is a scam, I'm just saying that, yo. It's a scam, I have a whole nother opinion been on pushed, that. That's we've been pushed to say <laughs> education. we have you back on that show. <laughs> yo. been, uh, we've been pushed to say that education is the top key. Don't get it twisted, education is a beautiful thing. And education doesn't mean mind. college, that's the thing, man. People think education means just like college. And not only that, but you know, we had the topic of good ass job. Sometimes mm. we, we had the definition of what a good ass job is. You know what's the ideal career path? Yeah, and they don't pay us money. We we go to these big institutions. God, yeah, God forbid. God bless if you could get into Princeton, you can mm -hmm, get to mm -hmm. Harvard it's and stuff fact. like that. Maybe you got a scholarship. Maybe you didn't get a scholarship, and now you leave undergrad with a mortgage and student loans, yeah. and you majored in communication. You know what? You, you know can what? A friend, get an entry level job. But Cliff, you know what a friend told me? Because my quick theory on the on the the college is like they just create pawns to be in a society, right? That's what I believe. Like mm -hmm. college is just like try to turn out people to just work at these yeah. jobs for companies. And my friend said, you know what Harvard and Yale do? They teach you how to use the people in those other colleges to be pawns in your business. To so work stuff. for you. To work for you. And All that's right, the so problem. I'm, the last topic I'm going to bring up in taboos in our community, then we move on, right? And it, it, it's, it sort of further reiterates the conversation that we're having. Okay. And it's tax refund boiling instead of tax refund investing, right? So even let's just even say 
that you know what you didn't think about the insurance and stuff like that and people always saying like yo if i had money i'm gonna do a business mm -hmm. if i had a little come if somebody would help me get some money yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> i don't even want to sell ignorant but even the, the 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 little petty let's call them street distributors and just yeah, like yeah. you know if i had yeah, I'm entrepreneurs 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 if young jesus <laughs> to put together to get this half a brick right <laughs> and then i can move and stuff like that you know i i don't i don't uh, I love Young Jeezy, no, no, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, but not for I'm nothing. Not There's a reason why they're successful. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. I'm not promoting that. I'm just saying, like, people with the mentality, right? They get their tax refund. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, that I want to start a business, I want to do something special, they out the forget window. about it. <laughs> out the window. But now I need that Ferragamo belt. Yeah, now I need yeah, the yeah. Gucci, Gucci joint. Yeah. But you know, you know, now yeah. I need that weave that Gabrielle Union had. Even though Gabrielle Union is a millionaire, I need that same weave. I need that real hair. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you what happened. So, let me finish saying. Why do you think that you know? Because this is the thing. People, another thing people need to realize is. Tax refund for the most part. There's some of us that we know people who got kids and mm -hmm. they don't make money, and all of a sudden they get a ten thousand dollar tax refund. But for the the average Joe who you work all the time, stuff like that, your tax refund is just your money being given back, back to, to you because mm -hmm. you overpaid during the time. So some people, you know, adjust it so that they don't pay that much, and then when it's tax time, they don't really get nothing. They don't really get right, nothing. Yeah. But some people are just like you know, what? I don't have that discipline, so mm -hmm. I I need to just work and to get seven thousand dollars in February and yeah. stuff like that. So my thing is like, why don't we think like, you know what? Boom. I always said if I had a few extra dollars, I could buy this for the low and then flip it or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. whatever your thing is. Why do we lose our damn mind when the tax refund money comes? I'll let you go first. Yeah, Cliff, look like you got an opinion on this Nah, one. <laughs> it's just, you know what it is. I'm going to start it off like this, right? When, when you get your tax refund, you got to tell yourself like, it's not. It's something that you shouldn't really look for to be like, oh, I need to boil on whatever. Boom. You should automatically have a plan. If you're going to get a large sum, if you have kids or whatever, mm -hmm. have a plan on what you're going to do to it. You know, if you are going to get 7000 every time if you have kids, if you have a tax refund, and you're in a, a couple of races, or even single, you should put that in a trust fund for your kid. Because you shouldn't rely on that tax refund to make you come up. You should have been, your finances should have been a little bit better during out the year period. Nah, I agree. So why are you taking this tax refund and say, you know what, I'm about to kill them this, this, these last two months. I bought Summer the big, I bought about the to be big real. screen. <laughs> you, you already bought the big screen. I'm in aces every two weeks popping bottles. And that's and the that, same you know thing what I mean? to but, me. That's but, the same, no, I'll let you finish. That's the same thing where it's just like, you know, we, 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 we say F today and we hoping for something to change for us to the future. Yeah, but no but, but the like I said, a lot of the times, if you're looking, if you're really, if you're the type of person like, damn, man, if you from checking, come back, yeah, I'm, I need that money, whatever, boom. That means all through the year, you've been a fuck boy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and, I, and I'm not going to say, I'm not girl here, too. And, and a fuck girl too. But I, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, everything's been ordered for me, what you call it, mm -hmm. too. Now that I'm a parent, a lot of things in order. So I'm like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm never gonna look for refunds like that. Cause when we do get our tax refund, for me and my wife, we are gonna throw it in my daughter's account. So she's good when she's get older. Cause you can't look at a tax refund and say it's gonna change. Like people start buying furniture, people start going on yeah. trips. Furniture people, that's way more than what your <laughs> refund was. Yeah, right? People start going this, but they start maxing out their car because yeah, they went to the pay they went it. to the good tax man that fixed the little numbers and though, come gave back you extra and, couple bricks. And then you get ordered in two years. Yeah, yeah. They want so money it's, back. it's very dangerous. It's a, it's a fine line. So what I say to you is, when you look at your tax refund. Look for it as a positive light to do something that you're going to invest, like you said, instead of saying, you know what? People think they really take over the game. They really feel like they hit the lotto for that. Yo, for that next you know how many big meeches? You ain't seen it all winter, right? Yo, oh, yo, <laughs> all winter is dude, ghost. Dude, dude, yo. Got the, dude got the the, the new, the whip with the top down, the camera yo, the top you, know how, you know how many big meeches Larry Hoover's you yo, get every crazy. crazy to nigga. April? Yo, they, they, they start listening to too much future. Too much future to top off. Going crazy. Nah, I agree with Cliff. I agree with Cliff because by, by no stretch of the imagination am I balling. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I do not look at tax season as a come up. Like, I'm not even thinking about that money. Yeah. Like it comes, I'm like, oh, put it in savings. You yeah. know what I mean? Or put it towards, you know, like my 401k, I start to like put it Everybody in different done whatever. Or whatever. You know, even, yeah. you want to make sure that even now. dudes, like even dudes who don't even, you know, you know, quote unquote entrepreneurs who don't make it the right way and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's just like, yo, they always, 
Every time I speak to a petty, what's the name? They're always saying like, yo. Yo, if I did, yo, so I did they this. Yo, yo, this mom, plan, listen, it's that. If you hit me off with a rat, I could get this. I nah. could and I don't get involved with that, right? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. when things go bad. When it go south. They, 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 they can see like you was part of the cartel. Yeah, but yeah. This is my thing. So when you do get the tax refund come up, you forget about that ambitious plan that you this had. This is all talk. And that's all of why. a sudden, like you said, you in Angels or Lust or wherever. And like, like you, and you, on, the the next, rain, you yeah. on the next vacation. I'm like, yo. Yeah. Come on. Not, and that's you, the thing because it's like, like you said, you shouldn't be, wait, you shouldn't be, you have the plan, right? But it's all talk because what's stopping them from doing it that day they told it to you? Mm -hmm. What's fine. really stopping them? There's even, even I mean, there's nothing. Even taste change. All of a sudden, I only eat steak, <laughs> steak, shrimp, and lobster. <laughs> when you was ramen noodles for the whole year. They want to go to Capitol Grill for the next two Niggas weeks. eating starfish tuna. And tuna then, and, and, uh, and the Chinese food, shrimp, and french fries. Now you want to be at Capitol Grills and <laughs> all this hot, top notch stuff. Lobster now mac and cheese. Now you have Lobster, lobster, lobster Mr. mac and Charles. cheese. Exactly. Philippe. All right, so we're going to move on, Ridiculous. right? And it kind of flows into what we're already talking about. And the question is, do we worry too much about acceptance, right? I feel like we do so much, and that's another reason why our community don't progress because it's just like, yo, we move so much to just like, yo, I need Stephen and Clifford mm -hmm. to know that I'm that dude. So I move accordingly. Mm -hmm. I buy things. I act a certain mm -hmm. way and stuff like that. Not acting my wage, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But just projecting and then hoping that, you know what, I... Someday I'm gonna get make more money yeah. and I'm gonna pay off the stuff like that. So the first question is: We consistently hear that the need for inclusion in traditional like white institutions, i.e., the Oscars, film advertising, mm. but we don't support items that come out of our own culture. Are we broken? And even though that's a little different than you know doing things for projection, <coughs> like what we constantly hear, like yo, Oscars so white. Yeah. Or the Grammys don't really reflect what's really hot yeah, in the streets and, and stuff music. like that. Yeah. But at the same time, when we got the NAACP Image Awards, we ain't the, checking for it. The BET BT Awards, we ain't checking for so, it. Soul Train, Train Awards. Yeah. Yeah. We got you the know? Black Girl Magic the now. Essence, yeah. The essence, yeah. Stuff like that. yeah. We look at it as niche, niche, niche kind of awards, yeah. and we're like, we're bigger than that and stuff like that. Like, yo, are we that broken that we still continue to have to impress master and those who don't care about us? And like that's. It's deep rooted. It's so deep rooted in, like in me, us. I don't you watch know what none mean? of the award shows. But, it's starting but to... if I was gonna spend energy, I'd watch the BET award shows. Yeah. Because you know, I'm gonna see my people winning, and mm -hmm. it's gonna inspire me to do more. Yeah, I'm not gonna purposely watch Oscar like the the, the Oscar, the, the the film that won the best Oscar was like the Shape of Water. Shape of Water, yeah. And I went to go see the Shape of Water. I saw Water, Shape of Water too. And it was weird. It was super weird. And it wasn't the greatest movie ever. It's bestiality. Yeah. It, was like, it was basically it was basically a splash. Remember Tom Hanks splash? Yeah. yeah. It was that reversed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. I mean, so so my thing is, are we broken? Like, why do we feel like we only need acknowledgement from people who don't look like us or people who don't care about us? It's more. I mean, being in the industry now seeing it from that perspective sure. it's a lot of just the foundation from the credible sources to validate yourself okay. you know like Oscars is a credible you know it's 90 years yeah but deep. we, yeah, we yeah, we've yeah, never yeah. been truly included in that we like, haven't no. we always had to look when we, we had get one an Oscar, yeah we had one off so what we play the maid we played the drug dealer. Yeah, the drug dealer. We played yeah, the Denzel. make me feel good. Holly Berry getting that banged out. That was a great movie. That was probably a good <laughs> one. That, that was a great one. movie. Everything else, but, yeah. But, but yeah that about, one probably was a good one. What about the Selmas? What about the Hurricane Harders, the Malcolm X? Yeah. yeah. The movies like that. Yeah. We don't get the Oscars for that. Yeah. Remember the Titans. But, you know, it's, proper, it's, it's a little even bit of propaganda. Moonlight. Even with Moonlight. Moonlight won Best Picture. Yeah. I mean, La La Remember wanted it then Best Picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you see Moonlight? Yeah, I saw Moonlight. What did you think of Moonlight? Honestly. I thought it was a real... I didn't... I don't know about best picture worthy, okay, but it was a really good story. Yeah, you know what I mean, it's but, good. But like, guess what? But I we, didn't see La La Land either. Yo, okay. but this so, is my thing. This is my thing, right? Um, what you call it? Uh, Gary Oldman won best actor. Best actor for, for playing, um, um, Winston Churchill. Winston yeah. Churchill, yeah. Darkest Hour, Darkest Hour, right, and stuff like that. And boom, I, I kind of I watched uh, The Crown, which is about Queen Elizabeth. Yeah, John Lithgow. Yeah, 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 on Netflix. So, but I, I say that to say this. Look at the stories that they get love for, and look at the story that even Moonlight. No, it's true. Yeah, even Moonlight be was a, about a broken get, man bro, yeah, who never got love. No sexuality. And yeah. broken, like they show off faults to us and say, that was "This is what this is what makes us." Yeah, this is what makes you good. Twelve yeah. years a slave. Yeah. That's roots. No, that's, that's what, roots all over. That's what I'm saying. It's propaganda. Saying? It's propaganda. Yeah. They're trying to show us this is how you win. This is what makes us applaud you. Keep being like this. But, this is what we accept. 
That's but basically what they're trying birth, to say. Birth of a nation, right? They buried that. They movie. buried the shit. They buried the hell out buried of that. Buried the movie. shit, nigga. A fucking canine top officer dog couldn't find that shit. The way you know they what I'm saying? Yeah, it was a good movie. And so, I so like why do we, I loved it? Yeah. I loved that scene in theaters. Even, even I'm gonna take it even to a superficial level, right? Like we was talking about all these award shows, right? You, you go, you see the Oscars, you see the Grammys. Mm-hmm. Look at how our people look out. We look sharp. We look like it's New York Fashion Week, no matter when it is. Yeah, yeah. Look at the BT Awards. People wear sweats. Yeah, but people look but like, even, like they just rode out of the hotel. That. It's, they it's, don't, it's, it's, part, it's part of the production, too. They have to make it like, yo, this is how you come to our thing now. You know what I'm saying? It's part of it's them. Like, you have to establish but, that. But we got to value our own. We, the, the problem is, the same way like you say you want to value your own. Just read, that's, it's a reason why. People are more. The reason why people don't use black banks is because people are more comfortable knowing that the white man got my money, he gonna protect it. If you a black bank owner and you mm-hmm. own a black bank, and I say, and the, I'm gonna use me and you as an example. Mm-hmm. You own a bank, Steve, whatever. Not saying I am, but some people are like, I don't fucking trust Steve. I don't know if he's gonna run off my bread, yeah. but I know I could go to Chase, I could go to City Bank, I could go yeah. there, and I'm comfortable. It's a credibility. With that. Yeah, but because how many? Because but that's the reason. But the reason why. People we are have that mentality. Mm-hmm. We're, we're comfortable with the Oscars. They come because they know that's what's going to be validated. To which go, and they're not yeah, comfortable but, but this to, is my to thing. support BET. We, we, exactly. so we say that yeah. we we right? think yeah. you, you bring up that bank example, but these athletes who go broke, we find out that it they was a white advisor or a white, advisor a white accountant or something who, who had took all advantage his men, of them. Yeah. Like yo, yeah. oh, you went in, you but, you got an investment, you got this Ponzi scheme. I'm going to tell my client, like, yo, throw some money in that. Mm-hmm. And you find out that he, the guy who's, who's managing the money, yeah. he had no money in that investment. Yeah, but he listen, but, he, but like, listen, he, he's saying the right words. Sometimes people could know, know that you, you got that black bank and you, they know it's successful. But like, yo, something about him, I don't trust him. But if that if that white dude that has two dollars and he's lost his last two dollars, but he know he could he you got twenty million and he take eighteen out of it because he he's playing games with yeah. you, man. I just put you in another investment. Look at this, check this out. He know you're not gonna read. He not no disrespect, but he know you're not gonna read the read the contract. That's why a lot of people get fucked in their contracts. They don't look at the contract. But I think I think we're getting better. We're getting better because it's the time. Yeah, it's the time. With you, you know what I mean? If I ever had money and stuff like that, I'd sign with Rock Nation, yo. Cause let me tell you. But why? Jay's, C- credibility, but, right? Credibility. That's what I'm saying. Jay's, Jay's been in game so long. You he's credible. Paper. Yeah. You know say Jay Z get you your. He's paper. credible. That's what I'm saying. It's the time frame. Like things have to be have that time frame to grow and show that we can do right by you. And now you'll be like, oh, okay, I trust it. He's been doing it for a long time. And, and um, all right. So I got to move on to the next topic because we're coming down with time. So yeah. my, my my thing is this, and you know, shout out to Lady Still. She was supposed to be a guest on the show, but some things happened and she had to take care of her stuff. So. Ladies, ladies still get better, and, you know, I definitely want, you know, you to be a guest another time. And I kind of had this question. I, I brought that in to say I kind of had the question because I would have loved to have a woman perspective. Mm-hmm. But I, I'll let you guys answer it. And the question is, we want to be acknowledged as beautiful, but we com- we conform our beauty to meet European standards. Are we part of the problem, right? Like, we want natural hair to be beautiful, yeah. but at the same time, we're the number one purchasers of weed. Yeah. We're the number one, you know, beauty supplies. We spend so much money burning, crisping our hair, lightening our skin, getting fake nails. And don't get it twisted. I know that makes women feel beautiful and more special about themselves. But we kind of, ourselves, like we want other people to acknowledge black is beautiful, mm-hmm. our natural stuff is beautiful. But then we're the number one consumers of things that make us look not like how we re- regularly look. So are we part of the problem as well? Like, to be honest with you, I think so. Because I mean, yeah, we I think don't, the we, answer is within the like, question. Like, to me, I love dreads. I love mm. a woman with Afro. She has style to it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, don't get it twisted. And I, I, I got to be honest with you. There's a difference between being natural and lazy and being natural and, like, presentable. Because yeah, yeah. some women be like, oh, I'm natural. But it's just like they walk around like their hair look like shit. Mm. But they're natural, no chemicals. But like, ma, you could have put some kind of spray yeah, in it, yeah, look yeah. kind of stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you could be natural and presentable. But my thing is, like, if, since we so go hard to conform to European standards, are we part of the problem? What do you think, Cliff? I think we part of the problem is because of social media. Social media has a certain standards. Social media now, like now, the Lapitas and people with yeah, natural it's popping, hairs yeah, and like it's popping. the whole like. The whole, no disrespect to my sisters or whatever, the whole Erica Badu and Macy Gray look, 
It's not really the, the thing So usually when someone says no disrespect, they're about to disrespect They're about you. to be mad disrespectful. No disrespect. But continue. You just 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 Gray's and Erica Badu look wasn't the look that everybody, you know. Back then. Back yeah, then. Yeah. But now Erica it's be so sexy. She no, but yeah, I know. But listen. That Badu box. Listen. But <laughs> now, now the Lapidus and everybody and, yeah. you know, with the. Especially that Black Panther you know movie really popped off. We can embrace now. But it took Black Panthers to be like, yo, I kind of like. Like I never realized, and and now I'm I'm part of the problem too, cause I never realized how beautiful Lapita was, cause I didn't never look that. Yeah, you're like not that. checking for her. Yeah, really, you're checking for but her. no, I know. Yeah, no, I, she's listen, she's it's snack. easier for me to check out Kim Kardashian and Lapita because Kim Kardashian already hit you with yeah, all the yeah, 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 Society with social media and everything. So it's a reason. It's, it's the same see. thing. It's the same thing with the, everybody getting the fake asses, the fake butt. Everybody you gotta this and that. Yo, it's, it's a so competition. You gotta compete. Yeah. It's so I'm crazy. Thinking. Like you know, I, I'm not a famous person and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. but what Black China has done to herself? Ridiculous. It's disgusting. She looks like homie the clown. But she's not a bad looking girl naturally. But right now, now she looks. Hit. But little Kim started that. Nah, I don't she know. She started. started. She got started, on the started. boat. No, she. That's competition. Lil' Kim, you know, she's been Lil' Kim. Now she see these young joints, these pops out here looking the way they looking. So she felt like she had to look like them in order to stay relevant. But and then yeah, she started but looking I crazy. Think, I think society, is like, I think social media plays a big part of it too because it's like you can't have natural hair and just... And be, like, be accepted to the point which you go. Society said you got to have the long hair, the Brazilian hair. That's what's being hair. pushed. That's what's yeah, being, being pushed. pushed. And, you know, so, the what's and that's what it is. is we'll, you know, this is the last thing I'm saying. We'll move on to the next part. Thing. Like, we'll, we'll go sweat, like you said, Kim Kardashian or Kylie Jenner, who get the surgeries to look like a like woman. Like the curvaceous, color. you know, yeah. Yeah, but you know. All right, so the, the last thing I want to um, say on this topic about acceptance is so, besides for the black the blockbuster movie like we just had Black, Black Panther. Panther congratulations mm -hmm. just hit one billion dollars definitely yeah you know definitely it's a big deal working on month, time is looking like it's about to get there yeah you know less than a month which is, which is good too I threw a few dollars in there sidebar I saw a wrinkle you in saw it already time. oh I want to take my knees <sighs> it wasn't good but no you know, I'll let you enjoy it for uh, so I'm not going to be a movie critic but it, well, it's not for adults though Still, like Harry Potter is not necessarily for adults. See, I'm either. not a I'm not a Potter head. Uh, all right, so all right, I don't want, I want to do. We right? talk off so, uh, off camera yeah, with that. Besides for the blockbuster movies, how else can we become, you know, more engaged in things that are about ourselves, right? Because you saw, <clears throat> like Black Panther made us feel so good. We mm -hmm. showed out like everybody I know yeah, seen yeah. it two or three times yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. It was amazing. And, and yeah. I want us to keep that kind of momentum. What other things can we do to keep that kind of energy? Well, I actually was talking about this yesterday. I have a friend, shout out to Overfab, Carrie Kadat in Brooklyn. She does a, Kwan a Kwanzaa crawl every Kwanzaa. I heard about the Kwanzaa It's crawl. popping My now. go to it's it. It's popping now. She's been doing it for a few years. Now they got it in Harlem and Brooklyn mm -hmm. where on first day of Kwanzaa, she sets up team leaders, everything. You start, you get a little group, you get your bands, and okay. you basically go around Brooklyn or Harlem now. And on the night of, you go with your group from bar to bar or lounge, black establishments only. So all the black yeah. establishments are That's part cool. of this. They all set up, sign up for it, say, okay, we'll allow for it to happen with our, with our place. And you just hop around supporting the black establishments only mm -hmm. for Kwanzaa. So that's a that's way to dope. really get that's into. So and this funny thing, is, I heard about it, but you know, I'm not a, a much of a. I don't go out much. Yeah, yeah. I'm like that married dude. So this will be like, a good thing though for we'll, someone who we'll just go. Yeah, this will be a good thing because you know it starts like you know evening time, early evening. No, that, you know, you could be out by eleven, twelve, amazing. and be home, but you just go around. Amazing. So supporting black businesses is how we can get into it. You know, like Cliff said, the banks, yeah. the bars, the lounges. You know, we're spending our money all the time, right? We have no choice. We got to spend money. So we're not go to support our own. Yeah. If if you can find things, the products that are worthy of it, you know what I mean? That, yeah, that's up to that. par. And you I want to look further for it, reiterate what you're saying. To me, it's just like, you know what? I try my best. I always say to try to find a way to spend, you know, my money with a black business. Mm -hmm. Even if you're going to spend your money outside of a black business, stuff like that, you got to hold that company, that brand responsible mm -hmm. to spend some of that money back into your community. <clears throat> yeah. Because yeah. if they straight up be like, no, mm -hmm. and don't spend that kind of money, then it's just like, yo, you literally are working against your own self -interest. Yeah, yeah. What other things you think we could do to, like, help us be more comfortable with our image and, and building You know, um, just like, going back to, like, you know, when we as kids, we used to go to town halls. I don't see the town halls no more. So mm. maybe, like, taking our open-up spaces and, you know, people, 
Like, you know, you can start our own town hall in your own community. You know, buy a space, whatever, get a couple people to invest. And then, you know, teach the kids what's going on besides what's going on. Not the 28 days you get in Black History Month in school. Mm. You can bring it in. I think every, you know, community should open up the town halls and yeah, get people to, you know, to volunteer and stuff. It's certain stuff in the community that... I don't I don't see them anymore. Like the after school, the good after school program, yeah, not the yeah. standard. It ain't like how I want, we, when I want we to take I want to take your money and keep your kid for two hours, but I just let them play all day. Yeah, they just wheels. run around. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about. Not being attentive. You remember to. when we went to town hall? We had like plays. We it was mm. it was legit, and we, we helping each other with to, the, to these and, to this day, like everybody that went to it. It's funny because we you meet them, you like damn. You remember we used to go to town hall? Like it was something like. You met up, but you still did activities. They had groups. Mm -hmm. They had certain things you had to do. Now we let we our TV raise our kids. Yeah. TV. Yeah, TV, video YouTube. games, YouTube. Yeah, and then, yeah. you know, these Social after media. school programs are just like right, so, you know, games. We're coming down with time, so I want to hit the last topic and, you know, try to get a couple of answers. Then we're going to let Steve talk more about what he got going on and where people can find him. Cool. So the, the topic is forbidden love, right? Like, we've all dated someone where it's just like people didn't support that movement. So I wonder, like, you know, what happened? What mm -hmm. made you get out of it? Are you currently still in it? And the question is, have you ever chased after someone everyone around you said you shouldn't? And what, what made you stay with that person? Like me in particular, I chased after a girl before my wife. And I tell people this, like, you know, she told me about the, the stuff that happened to her. You know what I mean? And I just wanted to protect. I wanted to be like, even though she was, like, being shady towards me and stuff like that, mm -hmm. I was just like, she don't know what she's doing. I wanted to protect her. I was like, quote, unquote, Captain Save a hoe. Not yeah, saying yeah. she was a hoe, but, yeah. you know, that the mentality. Term, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So... Have you ever been with someone that people say, nah, don't mess with us, and you stay? Like, what made you stay, if you can answer that? Nah, not really. Nothing that jumps to mind where it was like, you know, people were like adamant about it. Like, yo, nah, you can't rock with Just, But just like certain things people would see in someone, like, yo, you know, shorty's this, shorty's that. And I would just like turn a blind eye to it, you know. Like, even like my mother one time, she's like, I don't trust her. Like, I just don't, I don't know why. I just don't trust her. And so that person, are you still with them? Nah, and if not, nah, what? nah. It was, yeah, did, it was, did, did your mother's vibe was right? It, it turned out to be right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mother never lies. Mother always yeah, knows. What about you? <laughs> what about you? I mean, you know, it's uh, there's a lot of times where people will tell you, give you certain advice, right? But I think you got to take into judgment and, and handle the situation. Because even with my wife, every, every, nobody thought, everybody didn't think she was great for me, what you call it. You know, she got an attitude, what you call it. We have a beautiful daughter and stuff now, but, you know, I knew she had, she was a, a good person and the attitude part, you know, you could fix it up over time. But, you know, sometimes sometimes people just be like, yo, nah, this ain't, this ain't it. But you mm -hmm. got to make a, that judgment call to say, you got to go with your gut feeling and see yeah, how you, you can turn around it. the situation. Because that same person give give you that advice, that person, he or she is not happy. Mm -hmm. She could just be doing that because... Yeah, you used to be the go get it popping, man. Now you got this person. You're not making the same moves, or she's not making the same yeah. moves. Yeah. And you know, misery love company. So, That's true. so a lot of I the times. I always time, feel like the people who's giving you the most advice about don't do this, don't do that. A lot of the Their relationship situation be crazy. Yeah, yeah, a, lot yeah. Of, a lot of the times you gotta, you gotta do your research to say, you know what? I do value what this person's saying because he's their friend or he's mm -hmm. a dear family mm -hmm. member to me too, but. It's my decision at the end. And I learned that through the years of experience, right? Mm -hmm. I, you know, it, it, it takes time. So a lot of times you could take advice to a certain extent, but it's you got to make the final decision. And that's what so, I tell people all the time when I give them the advice. I always yeah. end by saying that, like, yeah. it's still your life. Decision you still you got to live you with gotta it. You got to be that you know final yeah. say so. Yeah. so the next question is, have you ever dated someone who was involved and what was your expectations? I've, I've, to me, I don't like messing up happy homes kind of situations. Mm. But I also felt like, especially in my younger days, like, yo, if she's entertaining me, mm -hmm. dude's not doing something yeah. right, so I don't care. As a married person, though, I, it's this, like, to me, I would never talk to another married <laughs> yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. I, I gotta, now I gotta, you're married, you're like, oh, what? Gotta, you know what I mean? But when you're in the, you gotta, in the young dating levels, it's yeah. like, yo, he ain't my man, F. Yeah, I right? I owe that nigga nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what do you think? Have you ever dated someone in a situation? I, and what was your expectations? I did, I did unknowingly one time, and knowingly, like, like one time, like, she, she dead ass hid the shit. Like, you know, <laughs> you know, I was, like, really young that, back yeah. then. And, you know, I found out, I was like, yo, what the? She's like, nah, I'm trying to leave him. I was like, nah, I'm good. Yeah. And, you know, that was that. And then another time, like, knowingly, I was just like, ah, I don't know what we're doing. Like, you know, but it's just, like you said, like, the vibes and everything was just, like, was cool. Yeah. But it never went any further than that because I always know, like, she got that person. and. Yeah. It's just not gonna. You also you know kind I mean? of there's, there's a there's a terminology 
how you get them is how you lose them. Yeah, so yeah. you always will be paranoid. Yeah. Like I dated a girl who was bisexual for a short time. Mm. She was sexy and I was so attracted to that and stuff like that. But then I was always paranoid. Like, <laughs> like it's scooped up? By it's home girl, no, but it's oh, a, is it's the homegirl the, 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 the slide? in the box? Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, like, come on. What about like, you? Yeah. Have you ever dated someone who was involved and what was your expectation? Oh, not dating somebody, but my name in college used to be A B. Just another, another body? just another body. Another Andrew, body. Just another body, <laughs> Andrew Bynum. Just another yeah, body. Just so another body. in college what's crazy was I was smashing this girl who man was in the military. Yeah, you told me that yeah, that story that, broke yeah, my heart. Yeah, yeah. Damn. She was on news. Yeah, she was telling the news part. Yeah, news I, part. I was smashing her like all through I used to go to cause we didn't have wire in my, in my dorm, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I used to go to a house, used to, you know, we do, we do. I used to watch The Wire. I wasn't even into it. The I, Wire. I, I, I tell him real quick what so, happened. So, <laughs> you know, so we, one day I'm watching TV. I turn and she's getting married to this dude. And I'm like. On this, the TV? You watching the joint? He's, he's taking it too much time on to TV? tell you. She's taking too oh, much time. snap. She's at the news. She's at the airport receiving her, 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 her man who was in the military. Saying, oh, oh, so like time has seen her. Man. Yeah. <laughs> And we're getting married and stuff like that. I'm like, Damn. dude. And Clips in the crib sick. Listen, oh, no, meanwhile, no, this dude is no, 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 no. sacrificing but his yeah. life overseas nah. while his wifey's out Over here being here, a smart. It it's crazy, man, how that happens, yeah. though. All right, so I'm asked this last question, then we got to wrap up, right? So have you ever dated someone who was a loser in life but was so attractive? Like, you know yeah. this person ain't yeah. ish, but they so sexy and they got good sex. So yeah. have you ever, and how did that end up? So, Answer quickly. Scully. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was when I was younger. So at that time, I wasn't, you know, like really checking for like real stability, this, that. But I just knew like this could be, this could never go any yeah. further. So it was yeah. kind of like in the moment, but enjoying that it. that become a lot of people's baby moms, though. That, no, that, it's, that you situation. can't get caught slipping. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, I wrap up. Everybody think they got a pull out game until they pull out game uh, yeah, fell. Pull out game strong, right? <laughs> what about you? I ain't never dated nobody like that. Like I said, my, in my, my younger days, I, I never date nobody like you know, dating like in a relationship wise or just screwing around. Dating. Nah. I yeah, I never seriously dated anybody. Yeah, yeah, like no seriously. I I spent a lot of time and energy with with females just to have somebody around mm. that I knew wasn't going to be the future, and you know, yeah. it worked out that we never had a future yeah. together. You know what I'm saying? So you ain't slip. That's gonna be the end of our episode. I'd like to thank Stephen for coming man, through. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, man, that's the but I also want to give him up, you know. A minute or two to shout out what he got going on. And, and what yeah. Well, going you can on. find me at I Stephen St. Pierre on Instagram, okay. uh, Twitter, official Stephen St. Pierre on Facebook. Um, like I said before, I do sketch comedies at the Pit, the People's Improv Theater. I'm part of the house sketch team there, so we do sketches on Tuesday nights. Okay. It's free. Where, where is that at? It's on 24th Street in uh, Madison. Okay. okay. It was totally free. Mm -hmm. Tuesday nights, just come through and watch some sketch What's comedy. That could seven, be a nice seven, little cheap date. You do that first, and then you go <laughs> out and get some drinks date. or something yeah. like that. Um, People be on a budget because yeah. that tax fee from once is gone. No, yeah. You got to go back to your regular there's a bar, life. There's a bar in there too. You have a couple of drinks, hang out. Yeah. Okay. The, uh, um, we got the New York premiere for a feature film on Wednesday that I'm in called Convicted. So it's wow. pretty dope. It's pretty dope. You know, by a guy who, um, you know, he got locked up because his boy kind of did him dirty. Now he's oh, trying to come to back that. out to like connect with his daughter and stuff, but then he's getting caught up in the game a little bit because his boy is trying to put him back in, and this detective is using him to get back at the boy, like at his boy. Film. So oh. that's um, at uh, the New York Film, the New Filmmakers New York Film Festival on Wednesday night at 9.30, it's the film. You come at 7 and watch the rest of the film, but our film is at 9.30 on Wednesday at Anthology Film Archives. And I got my own short film that I wrote, directed, and started in last year. Um, I filmed it. I'm in editing right now called Corey. Um, about a young man whose wife battles drug addiction, and he fights to protect his daughter and stop the cycle from happening to, wow. to her. When you're done with that, you got to let us know. What and you, you got to come back home. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Come back yeah. What, what about you? What do you mean? God? I'm just, I'm just like, you know, I, honestly, <laughs> I just, um, I went to church with my mom. You know, I like to spend some time with her. What is this? It was just a great service. I want to talk about that. Beautiful. And then he was talking about, the preacher was talking about overcoming. You know, it's overcoming things and just, you know, 
Let the past be the past, you know. Sometimes you, you put yourself in certain situations and you don't understand why you go through them. Yeah. But it's how you fight and overcome the yeah. situations, how you get better. And that was, it was one of them things I needed today. You know now how you, you go you to hear it, it like, and Yo, you know I needed I that. They know my life. So, <laughs> like, so that's, my I life. mean, you know, I'm not saying I'm 100% all the way in, but, you know, I'm trying to lead my life into mm -hmm. just being very spiritual because... Trust me, when I, when I put God in my life first, and a lot of good, good things, things have come to me. Yeah, and, that's what's up. And that's a testament to my mom. That's what's up. Yeah. You know, this is the last thing I'm going to say before we head out. And just like, you know, victory team. Uh, I was in church. One of the, the topics was like victory posse. Like, you got to find people around you who not only lift you up, but they're proud to shout out what you got going Definitely. on. And, and they don't have no vested interest. They just want to see you win. Mm -hmm. I feel like we, we have so many people around us who... Who's only around us when we popping, but yeah. when we not popping, yeah, yeah. it's hard to find that's them. True. And then when you build some momentum, all of a sudden, like, yeah, that's my man yeah, from yeah, back yeah. in the day. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Now you're trying to claim that ricochet energy. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying, like, yo, and it's be not part authentic. Of, it's not genuine. Be part of people's victory team, and even when it's just Early. you watching them, and yeah. you share their stuff. Yeah, yeah. Come out to support that's their film fact. festivals, yeah, and yeah. like that's that when you fact. can, because we need that energy, right? Because you need a victory team. Definitely. And like I always tell people, chase your legacy and not liabilities, because all of that stuff just goes away. And we out. Blessings. Peace. At it again. Views from the friend zone. Mom trying to beat. I'm trying to reach the end zone. You think I'm kind of sweet and you want to be friends, though? It's cool, though. Just don't try to play me for no fool, yo. Views from the friend zone. Mom trying to beat. I'm trying to reach the end zone. You think I'm kind of sweet and you want to be friends, though? It's cool, though. Just don't try to play me for no fool, yo.